What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Boy. No! <laughs> Hello, friends! It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been like a year since I've made a YouTube video. It's been a busy year. Excuse my appearance today. I am so sorry. I look like booty for you. But I just got done working out this morning. Haven't showered. Just ate tuna fish. Haven't brushed my teeth. I'm so glad you can't smell. All of that. All of this that's going on. So I took a bar class today. It's the one I go to every Monday. And I'm pretty sure if you caught all of my sweat drops into a cup, it would weigh as much as my firstborn child. Regardless of how I look, I can still present all of my curriculum looking horribly. Yay! So, fair warning, I've got sister here with me today while I make this video, so it might be a little rough. If you don't know me, my name is Jennifer Todrick from the blog Life as a Rambling Redhead, and I wanted to pop on here and make a video. Hey, Berkeley. Berkeley, you gotta be quiet while I make my video. You're gonna be back? Uh, yeah. Oh, goody. I, 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 I don't like that. Okay. This video is gonna be impossible. <laughs> God bless it. What I was saying is I wanted to pop on here and do a video um, with my most requested topic. Lately on my Facebook page, Life is a Rambling Redhead, you guys have wanted to see all the curriculum I've been using with my four-year-old for preschool slash kindergarten. If you've been watching my Facebook Lives, then you know that I've been coming out ever so slowly as a homeschool mom. Um, we're doing the university method, which is three days in a private school and two days home with me, plus the weekends, because we do homeschool stuff on the weekends because that's what my son likes to do. I must say, a lot of the stuff you're going to see today is not kindergarten curriculum. One of the best things about homeschooling, things that I love, is that you don't have to stay in the grade level that your child is supposed to be in. It's whatever their learning level is at, that's where you go. All of this stuff that I'm going to be mentioning, and it is a lot of stuff, let me tell you, is all going to be written out in the video description below with all direct links, easy, quick shopping. I would love it if you used my affiliate links because it helps support this blog. It inspires me to make more video content. Hoorah! Remember, kindergarten is a lot of crafts. We do crafts, of course. But today, I'm strictly going to show you the curriculum and the tools we use. So here we go. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready, Berkeley? Uh, my, my, my. You want to show them what you did? So pretty. First, I want to talk about this book, the Brain Quest book. This is probably our only curriculum that we use that has multiple subjects. Um, we just kind of pick at it day by day, whatever I want him to accomplish. This uh, book alone has phonics, spelling and vocabulary, reading and writing, language arts, sequencing and sorting, math skills, addition and subtraction, shapes and measurements, times and money, social studies, and science. <sighs> That's a lot of subjects. Don't write on the book, don't write on the book. So basically what happens with this book is I go through and I tab the stuff that I want Vaughn to accomplish. I do the more immediate stuff on the side. Um, so that way we hack at these whenever he wants a worksheet to do. And then after these are complete, we'll move on to these. That's kind of my system I've been doing with all of these big workbooks. Um, this is for first grade, but I'm, this Brain Quest has many grade levels that you can find. The reason I love these books is because they're just so bright and colorful. Um, Vaughn is really attracted to them. It keeps his interest versus some of the other workbooks that I'm gonna get into later. They're really white and boring pages. These are awesome. This is my number one favorite all-in-one curriculum book. So if you want somewhere to start or maybe just some practice with a preschooler or your child after school, I highly recommend the Brain Quest books. Moving on to mathematics. So this is our grade one workbook um, that we do the most work out of whenever it comes to workbooks. We've got our Star Wars guy here. I bought Star Wars strategically so it would keep my son's attention. He has never seen Star Wars, but something about this guy right here is just so warm and inviting. These are by the same people who made Brain Quest, which is what attracted me to it. But as you can see, it's got great pictures of little droids. I don't know what these are. Star Wars people. No idea. Not a Star Wars fan. I know. Shoot me. Don't shoot me. 
We don't shoot people, Burke, okay? Okay? Good. The second workbook we have is DK Math. Um, I actually love this book um, strictly because of the content in it. It has a ton of good content. Look at all that clockwork. Um, it has a lot of money. I just love that it has the extra stuff instead of just addition and subtraction. It really has everything, the whole realm in first grade. This is, yes, this is first grade math as well. The only problem with these uh, is that Vaughn, my son, likes the colorful workbooks. So when he opens up this book, it's like, he doesn't keep his attention. So if you have an older child or a child who doesn't care about colors and shiny things, then this is a really good book. I'm taking it back old school, y'all. Old school. I don't even know what this is. I don't even really know what it's called. Educational keyboard. So this is a great car, car toy because it's really quiet. Huh? huh? Don't we love quiet things? Uh huh. You don't even know what it means to be quiet, Berkeley Ray. You have no idea. Except right now you're being pretty good. Is it because you're busy? Good talk. Good talk. Has the little one plus one and then Vaughn can check his answers by himself. Again, love this for a car toy because it's quiet. Do you guys remember these from grade school? Because I know I did. That's why I bought them because they were familiar. I was like, oh, I loved those because I'm a very tactile learner. I like to hold all the things. So I bought these with the intention of using them for math. Two plus three is five, etc. But my son wasn't too interested in using them for that reason as math manipulatives. He just likes to play with them as an imaginative play toy. So he builds things, snaps the blocks, mixes up the colors, and I think it's great. It also helps with his Mama. dexterity, Mama. which is an awesome thing. Mama. Yeah! So the very next day, Vaughn decided that he loved the math cubes, which just goes to show that if your child isn't interested in something right at the beginning, they might like it with a different activity. We went to Hobby Lobby and I bought these little foam stickers. Um, they're all space things. So we're gonna use these as counters and see how it works. You know, like three spacemen went to the moon. One fell off, never to be seen again. How many spacemen lived? Probably not. Ow. We probably shouldn't, probably shouldn't go there. This is our number one favorite toy right now. I bought this at Teacher Tools, but I've linked one in the video description for one on Amazon. It's actually a bigger version, which I highly recommend. I got the one that ends at the thousands because I thought it was gonna overwhelm him and be too many numbers. Well, we worked with it for 30 minutes and now he can read all these numbers perfectly. 3,568, yada, yada. So I'm kicking myself because this is $20 and the other one is $20. So uh, my advice for you is if you wanna get this um, number placement chart, get the bigger one and then maybe just work with the smaller numbers until your, your son or daughter is able to go to the higher place value. You can either hold it up like this or you can set it on a desk, which I love because Vaughn will take this around the house and play with it himself. Um, it shows you the ones, it shows you the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands. Love this thing. Another part of math that my son showed an interest in really early on was money, money value. So instead of buying plastic money, I went ahead and I got real money so we could yeah. earn it with... So great, Berkeley. That's so, those lines are perfect. So I wanted him to learn with real money, but I'm also a really big germaphobe. So I took all of these coins and I soaked them for about an hour in rubbing alcohol. And then I rubbed each coin down with a microfiber cloth and yeah. washed it. So while obviously these aren't pristine and sterile, it's pretty darn close. And now I feel like we don't have to go rushing to the sink every time we play with our money. My last math item is Telly the ticking time clock. She is great. It's pretty much how Vaughn learned to tell time. It's from this thing. He thought it was a game when really he was learning. Gotcha, sucka. Gotcha. A little light at the top. If you want to put it in the kid's room. And it actually shows real time. It's got two different volume levels and it's got two game modes. So she can either tell you the time or it's the quiz game. Hello, how are you? I'm Kelly, the teaching time clock. Move my hand. And I'll tell you the time. Now it's seven ten. See? Let's see, Telly. Now it's seven fifty. Seven fifty. And then we can also do quiz mode. Let's play a game. Can you find eleven twenty-five? Telly, you're making me work too hard in the morning. Good. Can you find Yay! three? That's enough. 
That's Let's enough. play again real soon. <laughs> bye bye. So this thing is really cute. Highly recommend, even for a birthday gift or a Christmas gift. Um, the kids will love it and they won't know it's actually like a school toy. So now we're gonna jump into the bulk of our curriculum here in the Todrick household, and that is geography. I know, geography for a four-year-old sounds ridiculous, but it is what sparks him to learn and to memorize, and it's what he has the most fun with, so we use geography for literally everything. Right here, we're using geography to work on phonics and spelling. Guys, Pinterest is an amazing resource, especially for geography and science and math, pretty much any subject. Here, he's working on clapping out the syllables, so Bosnia, and then he has to color in the correct number. We've got our little flag, so we printed out and laminated. Pinterest is the bomb. This is our main textbook that we're using. Um, it's actually for grades three through six. It's the first one we ever bought, and he loves it. I'm gonna show you the inside, because whenever I see things on YouTube, before I buy it, I love to like get inside it and like look like I'm touching it feel like I'm holding it in my hands. So hopefully you get that vibe from this video. The first um, chapter is legends and maps, um, when the kids are first starting to read maps. The second one is about landforms, physical features, political and physical maps. The third chapter is all about the states individually. It has all the resources lift listed. Blech. It has all the resources listed, um, fun facts about each state. It's got the rivers on there, all the landforms. That's his favorite. He literally reads that chapter like a book. The next chapter is about North and South America. It's got a ton of questions. Got some map work, also landforms. Next is grid maps. So this is a really good one. This even incorporates some math where you're trying to find the latitude and the longitude to get to you to an object. The next one is about continents and oceans. And then the last chapter is hemispheres, latitude and longitude, etc. Really good book. As you can see, there's tons and tons of content in it. We have used this book so much, ripped out so many pages, and you can't even tell. It's still massive. We have so much more to do. Our main reading book that we use is this book called The Travel Book. I love this book so much. I found it in my local library. We kept it for a full six weeks until I had to give it back. And then I decided that I didn't want to give it back but I had to. So I ordered it on Amazon. It was only like $13. This is a great book. It goes through every single country of the world. It has where it is on a map, its population, its life expectancy. It's so bright and colorful. It's got real pictures, it's got illustrations, and it's got fun facts and real facts about all the countries. I tab it off because right now we're in the middle of our Europe unit study, so we are hacking away at all of the countries in Europe. About two, one to two a day, just kind of skimming the surface about what they're about, the people, the culture, stuff like that. So we are in this book every single day. Another fun tool with geography are these geo puzzles. Um, I have all six. You can get them individually or you can get the bundle. I'm gonna tell you the bundle is cheaper. I think it's $60 for all six puzzles. You're gonna be paying $15.99 if you buy them separately. Um, I bought them separately because I got four of them gifted to me and then I bought two of them on my own. So right now, I'm gonna show you the Europe one because that's the one we have out on the table right now because of our Europe study. Um, I just got this one in the mail. This is Asia. It's a newer model. They're both equally just as awesome, but I will say the newer ones, which is what you are gonna get if you order today, they have the newer ones on Amazon. The pieces are even thicker, the puzzle pieces. So it's just a really good, very well-made product. Love these puzzles. Next up, Geo cards. These are the number one toy in my household for my four-year-old. It's the first thing we ever got him um, as far as geography goes, and he is still addicted to them to this day. He plays with these every single day. This one, I have no idea where the lid is. This is countries, so it's got your country listed, it's got the population, the landmass, the continent it's on, and then on the back list is capitals. South Africa actually has three capitals, if you didn't know that, which is what's on the back. Um, he also has the states and capitals, and we are awaiting the Europe set. It is coming from Amazon. And then this one is just the 50 states, the population, the landmass, the nickname, and its capital on the back. Highly recommend these. We use these actually for math purposes. He reads me the population and the landmass, and one of the games in here is you just divvy the cards up evenly. You say your country, you say your population, and whoever has the highest population wins. Super easy game, my four-year-old loves it, and it really helps with his math. So 6.6 .6 million, he has to say it correctly, or 757,000. 
So that really helps with that large number recognition. Last flashcard game is from Professor Noggins. It's Countries of the World. We honestly have not played this game correctly yet. It's got the picture of the country on the front with its flag. And then it's got questions on the back, easy and hard. And it comes with a little dice and you roll it and it tells you which question um, to ask. Vaughn just likes to carry him around by himself and he reads the question and then the answer. He's essentially just memorizing the game. I think he's like stocking up the answers. So whenever we actually play the game correctly, he'll win because he has memorized all of the answers. Just realize that's probably what he's doing. When it comes to geography, the library is such an awesome resource for books. This little series, if you can find it, is called Exploring Countries and is my absolute favorite. It's got so many facts on every country. This book I got off of Amazon recently, it's all about London, since we are doing a Europe study and I love London. This is such a cute little book. Um, if your child is interested in different countries or if you're going to do a study on Europe, highly recommend this book, as well as this book called Adventures Around the Globe, and it's actually the same people who make the travel book that I'm obsessed with. It's just got some awesome, vivid pages. Here, I'll show y'all, I have it tabbed off. I have the Europe tabbed off, because we are gonna start this one tomorrow, because we have so many books going on. It's big, colorful pages with facts, and this is a big old sticker spread, so they can put stickers on here. It's a picture of Venice, so they learn about Venice being mostly on the water and then it's got some coloring sheets in there. It's such a cool book. It has a lot of different activities and it covers um, all of the continents. On to science. Since he is four, um, we don't do a ton of science yet. We do something about once a week. Um, I love this little interactive science notebook. It's by Carson DeLosa. If you look in here, it's got one activity per page and you cut it out and I put it all in a binder to where Vaughn could open it and read it like a book. He's literally never done that, but maybe one day he will. So we do all our activities on a piece of construction paper. I smell, Tootie's an apple pie. <laughs> Plants need and want, parts of a butterfly. And I also do um, geography in here as well. That's our only science workbook we do. Otherwise, it's just going outside and touching things, talking about things. The other workbook I have is technically a huge coloring book, but my son hates to color. Like if you hand him a coloring sheet, he will most likely cry. So I took it on myself to color the pages for him because force me to color. Like I need an excuse. So here we are learning about the climate and we've got our geography, our world right here. Next, we're gonna be moving on to the seasons. So it's just one page of coloring and then one page of facts and a little bit about it. I think it's the perfect amount of knowledge for a kindergartner first grader even, second grader. So I really like that book. Another great place to look for little random science things is the Target dollar section. I got these little plant kits and they're little seeds for cucumber, cherry tomatoes, and sugar snap peas. September 26th is Johnny Appleseed's birthday. So we're gonna pretend like we're Johnny Appleseed and we're gonna try to plant trees in our backyard. <laughs> we're gonna need extra prayers because this mama can't keep a single plant alive, okay? <laughs> uh, can't keep anything alive, except my kids. I keep my kids alive. We also have little flashcards from Ebu. Um, they're natural earth and science flashcards. We haven't really gotten into them yet. Got different things that have to do with science on them, like here's the tornado one, and then on the back it's got facts about tornadoes. It's got weather, it's got under the water, it's got mammals and marsupials. Did I say that right? Marsupials, marsupials. It's got fossils and minerals, birds and leaves, all sorts of fun stuff. Next up, the subject of human anatomy. This is probably a close second obsession with my four-year-old. He loves to learn the details of human anatomy, not just blood, brain, and lungs, but he wants to know like everything. So we have quite a few things we look at every single day when it comes to the human anatomy. This is probably our textbook. I got it at Half Price Books. You should check there. It's called Encyclopedia of the Human Body. And it just has some great pictures and lungs and breathing, great pictures and information, and it's really bright and happy for kids. Pretty easy to read. We only have one workbook because the workbooks are actually pretty hard to find for the human anatomy. This one is for grade level fifth through eighth grade, and we are hacking away at it. But as you can see, it's got more of a detailed look of the body, so it's not just this is the brain, it's the different parts of the brains and what the different parts do for your body. We do this one probably every couple of weeks. 
Other than that, we just talk about things and we do a lot of crafts with human anatomy. Uh, another great tool when it comes to the human body, especially when they are just starting to learn about the systems and the bones and the organs, is this Melissa and Doug's floor puzzle. Um, we had this out for probably two weeks when he started showing interest and it's what really sparked him to keep learning and getting more details about the human body. It has the bones and it has all the lungs and it's numbered and then you have all of the words on the bottom for what each one is. Another Professor Noggins flashcard game. Again, we have not played this game correctly yet because he doesn't want to, but he just loves these little flashcards. He takes them around and he reads them um, and it's got easy and hard questions quizzing him about different parts of the body. Next is my son's least favorite subject, which is writing. We're going easy and slow. We're just doing the trace numbers book, the trace letters book. I love that they have um, all of them are traceable. So it's not just a long line of something that's blank because my son gives up real quick when that happens. It has a lot of trace work for the numbers and the letters. So it's definitely a great book to start with for beginners. We also just kept it really simple with a basic wide ruled letter pad. This is a tear from whenever he got frustrated and ripped the front of the book with his teeth. So we don't push writing too often. If you two have a kid who doesn't specifically like writing and you think it's related to how they hold a pencil, I definitely recommend these big fat pencils. Uh, the brand is My First Ticonderoga. Ticonderoga. Ticonder. Ticonder. These pencils, these pencils are really, really good. Um, and then we have these little, this little grip that I got off Amazon. You stick your pencil through there and it helps them put their um, index finger, middle finger, and thumb in place. So it kind of acts as like a brace to where it kind of takes some of the port for support away for the pencil. Love this. And then I just got a big basic, um, this is a dry erase board. I think I got this at Target in the dollar section. And this actually is really fun for him. He can hold a chunkier dry erase marker. It's a little easier for him. And then I can get him to write some stuff on this versus pencil and paper. Reading, I don't just have like two or three items for reading because everything can be used as reading material. But I do love these Bob books. These are the ones I have linked in the video description. These are the more advanced ones. The other ones that we started with are really tiny. They're like half this size. Um, but if your kid is already um, reading a lot, this is this level. Let's see if I can see it. We're on this level, which is a little bit more advanced book. I think this is the most advanced they have. And then it's collection three. And then, um, once we're done with these, we're done with Bob books forever. It'll make me so sad. Another book we use for reading is this one. I actually found this at Home Goods, but I've got it linked. It's the Big Red Book of Beginner Books, and it's one, two, three, four, six different Dr. Seuss books all in one book. We actually have three versions of these. So we do these every single night. They'll read them to me, I'll read them out loud, whatever we're feeling for that night. But these are some really cute books. This book is called First Language Lessons, it's level one and two. I was actually gifted this by another homeschooling mom. I really have liked this book. We aren't diligent on doing it every single day, but we try to do it a few times a week. They're verbal lessons, so like teaching what a noun is, a pronoun, a common noun, etc., etc. It's basically like a teacher's book. You've got your lesson up top and then it tells you what to do. Say to the kids, yada yada, instructor in the poem about how creatures move. They're memorizing poetry, it helps with their memorization. Um, highly recommend this book, especially if you are a homeschooling mama. This is a good one. Now for more fun things. I mean, all of this stuff is fun, but the stuff I'm about to show you is not very subject. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Here we go. These are little slip covers They're called dry erase pockets. So I love, love, love me some Pinterest. Now that I'm homeschooling, I get tons of worksheets for free um, or different activities or ideas. Just makes it more fun and I can reuse them over and over again. I'll load these up like whenever I'm cooking dinner and I love that it's two-sided so we have two worksheets that we can do. Well, littlest one does it for writing. Can't you see? She follows the instructions beautifully. <laughs> but she's two. So we'll, we'll cut her some slack. But these are just really, really, really fun and it saves um, a lot on paper if you wanna you know, keep a worksheet that you want them to continue to do over and over again. Another great game for reading are these bingo um, sight words. This is level two, I also have level one. Great game. 
This one is my favorite new board game. It's called Race to the Treasure. It is a cooperative game, so there's no winner or loser. It's so sturdy. I love this company. All the instructions are printed on the box on the back, so you will never lose them. Can I get an amen? I'll show you really quick the game, because you're going to want to get it. So here's the board game, and what you're trying to do is you start here, and you're trying to wind a path down to the end before the ogres get to the end. So you guys draw randomly, you and your child, and you're trying to create pieces of the path that connect, that go all the way down to the pot of gold, but you can also draw ogres at the same time. And if you draw more ogres before you get to your path, you lose. And you have little keys that you have to collect in order to get, it's just a really, really good game. There's grid work involved, because at the very beginning, they have to roll the dice, like B5 or whatever they roll to figure out where to place the keys. It's just a really good game. Another really cute game is by Ibu and it's called Gathering a Garden. This is such a pretty game. Here is the board game. It's just so sturdy, guys. Like, listen to this. Such a sturdy board game. Someone's at my door. Honest confessions. I have my groceries delivered and it's made my life 10 times better. I'm telling you, I'm a better person because I have my groceries delivered and I don't have to take my two kids grocery shopping with me. So this is just a really cute board game. As you can see, you go around and you have a garden. Every player has a garden in the bottom of the board. And then you go around and you collect flowers, uh, birds, we've got herbs, we've got trees, and we've got vegetables. So they learn a lot about plant life while they're playing. There's a little spinner. And the pieces are just so cute and they are so well made. So well made, not just little flimsy paper. So it will stand up well to even the worst of babies. Another game, it's not really a game, but I love it, are these little pattern blocks, activity sets. I got this for my four year old. Um, he does them from time to time, but they're not his favorite. Honestly, he loves them is my two and a half year old. So you put this little puzzle in front of them and then they have to place the little blocks um, on the right place. So it's great for colors, great for shapes. You can see this is a hexagon, right? Two, four, six. yes, hexagon. So they have to make little shapes with their colors. If you have an older child, um, this is awesome. Like it has little puzzles on the back. It says make this shape using 18 blocks, then do it again with only 15. So there's little like riddles and puzzles for the older kids. Um, and it's got, you know, make this shape by only using green blocks or whatever. So really cool and all different ages can do this. The only workbook that I have that I consider play is this dot to dot in Maze's book. So they have to go through and connect the dots like one to 25 just reinforces counting um, and then again mazes. So just brain activities. We take them to restaurants. We also take books to restaurants. We've taken a lot of this curriculum to restaurants to do while we're waiting for food. Works out perfectly. We also have these um, dab and dot markers. I got these off Amazon. These are basically the equivalent to paint or markers. Definitely not the cleanest activity. I'm going to warn you, but they take it and we'll do math with it. I'll find there's tons of like dabbing worksheets on Pinterest or I'll make my own. We use them in bingo to dab instead of markers. Just another kind of artsy project. This one I love, it's the Melissa and Doug beading set. I got this for my oldest um, to help with his hand movements and we're really trying to work on his dexterity because that's why he doesn't like writing very much because he doesn't want to hold a pencil or silverware or really he doesn't want to hold anything. So he does this beading every once in a while. Who loves it the most, again, is my two and a half year old daughter. She loves to bead, they do it together. And for my son, since it seems too easy and pointless and he doesn't wanna do it, because I think he's not challenged by just putting beads on a string, um, I made these little pieces. If you go to myfreebingocard.com, you can make a bingo card of different numbers of squares to pretty much do anything. I use it for a ton of activities, not just bingo. But I like it because it gives me a square that I can cut out. So I did like green oval, whoops green square. So I printed out different um, versions of these pieces and then my son draws them and it creates a pattern and he has to bead the pattern that he drew. So that's something that I added just to make it a little more challenging for him so he wasn't so bored with it. Another resource I use for spelling, I just love, again, to hold all the things. 
I got these at Hobby Lobby. They're little wooden cubes and they have different letters on them. So there's only one of each, I think. There's two of a couple of the vowels. So we only use these to pull out the vowels or consonants or I made a little worksheet that has like C, blank space in and he has to put a num uh, letter in there to spell can or different things like that. So I make up my own games with these little cubes, but I just thought the tiles were so cute and it's something different than worksheet or writing on paper. Another thing I made on my own with spelling is I took popsicle sticks and I wrote bigger words that he was learning and we do bingo with this. So he'll draw the popsicle stick, I call it out, and if he has it, he dabs it or puts a marker or a check mark or whatever on his bingo card. Again, myfreebingocards.com. That's where I take all of my words that I put on here myself. You add them into the database and it mixes all of them up and I got 30 free bingo cards with all of the words that I wanted to put on there. It's a great free website. These are my favorite hands-on toy for spelling and phonics work. I just got these um, at a teacher tools store but they're actually cheaper on Amazon. These are the letter cubes, the Unifix letter cubes. These are blends so all of them have like C-H-S-H-T-H-S-T-S-K so I'll hold one out to him. Uh, what does this, what, it won't, it won't focus. <laughs> focus! So I take our blends and we work on the sounds of the blends. And then we also have the consonants and vowels um, set. And this is just the plain letters by themselves. So basically what will happen is I'll take TR and he has to put together a spell, a word that starts with TR. So the easiest, of course, is working with the two blends. He'll grab the EE -E and make tree. So we do that. So really it's spelling and phonics work um, with doing these and he just likes to play with them on their own. So I'll do a little bit of work with him one-on-one -on -one and then leave him to play and mess around the with the cubes. I like him a lot. Again, I have a ton of stuff that I did not mention. It's still on our shelves, like for example, We've got our skip counting charts, we've got our number charts, all that kind of stuff. I just feel like that's a whole nother video because this is already a really long video. Thanks for sticking with me and watching. If you guys want to see a video on anything else, maybe unit studies or crafts that we do, just write it in the comments. Please give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more. Follow me on all of my social media handles, which is also listed in the video description below. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great week. Until the next time, this redhead rambles. Sounds like really cheesy when I say it out loud. Probably shouldn't, probably shouldn't say that again. Did you guys see my pile of laundry as I walked by? All on the couch over there. Let's see if we can zoom in on it. Oh, nasty. Nasty, nasty! Gotta do it all today.